Hello, and welcome to part 5 of uh, programming this ship game in Unity, this spaceship game in Unity. This is Blender, not Unity, and I'm going to be using it just to create a wedge for our shields. Because we're going to have four shields, one in each quadrant, and so we need to have a mesh which is wedge-shaped. So uh, if, you're, if your reticule isn't in at 0, 0, 0, just hit Shift-C and it'll go there. And then we'll go ahead and add in a circle, like this easy enough. So we want to press tab to go in and edit the circle's individual points. It enters in edit mode. And then we can hit E to extrude, but we don't want to extrude in any given direction, so we just click. And that sets it down right where we extruded it, so it's extruded directly on top of itself. But then we can hit S to scale and then move our mouse. See? So there we go. And that is a shield wedge. Uh, we're going to make it thin like this. Um, but this is a whole shield. We only want a tiny for portion of it. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do a quarter of a shield. For example, we could just do this and this and cut the rest off. Um, but in actual, uh, the actual, in in game, our shields are going to be forward, backwards, left, right. So passing up uh, a wedge, which is off to the side, is uh, is no good. So instead, we're going to delete so that our wedge is in front, like this. And that's not quite right. That's still too many pieces. So I'm using B, box select. Hit B and then drag your mouse and you will select uh, these and then hit X to delete them. So this is a quarter shield. And it's what we're going to actually be using uh, in our game for our shield wedges. Uh, we're going to go ahead and select all by hitting A and then we're going to hit unwrap, project from view. And that'll just give us very, very basic uh, uh, UV mapping, which we'll tweak later, but uh, we don't want to have no UV mapping. So then we hit save and save it to the correct directory, which is here in Blender, or ra rather here in Unity. You can see that the shield arc with our circle. So this is the uh, circle we'll be using for our shields. Let's go ahead and put it into. There we are. Oh, oh my camera is all upside down and crazy stuff. There we go. So the circle is, let's go ahead and just stick it far enough away that we can see what's going on. So the circle is oriented kind of awkwardly and it's pink. What's going on? Well, Blender has different, uh, uh, Blender's axes are correct and Unity's axes are not. Uh, Unity has Z and Y swapped. And in addition, of course, it doesn't have a material attached, so it's going to be a little bit wrong. Uh, so there's a couple of ways to do that. The first, is, the, the easiest way is to create a, a, a surrounding object, which we will call a shield arc. And this will be the object we actually manipulate when we're trying to do our shield stuff. So then we can drag the shield arc itself, the blender object, onto it, and you can see that there we, ha there we go, we have it. But you can also see that there is a gap. And this is a problem that arises from time to time with blender objects. Can you see a gap? I can't see a gap. There's no gap. The problem is that the triangles only point in one direction. Um, so we have a gap. We can't see it, though, because Blender shows it in both directions. You can do this trick where you go up here into shading and select smooth, and you can see pretty clearly where the normals switch. So then you can go into the object and select the face that's all screwy, and then you can hit flip direction. And you hit control S. And you go back into Unity, and like that, it's fixed. Now that may be fixed, but it's pointed the wrong way, so we need to actually rotate it 180 degrees around the y-axis. Now, the reason I did it that way is because if we rotate it negative 90 along the x-axis, hey, it wouldn't work right. Uh, and if we rotate it at 90, it's invisible because you can only see it from below. So leave it with the negative 90 it starts with, and then rotate it 180 around the y-axis. We'll be doing all of our rotations uh, of the shield object around the y-axis. And there's our shield object. But its material is pretty crap. Let's create a new folder called Materials. Now there's already a folder called Materials underneath Blender, so you can see it here. That's created automatically and I don't recommend using it. Uh, unless you're actually doing material work in Blender, in which case it's invaluable, but we're not. So we're going to create a shield material, which we're going to uh, set up as a transparent diffuse, like this. We're going to make it so it's blue, like this, and is partially transparent. And then we'll drag it onto the shield arc. There you go. 
So now we've got a shield arc. Uh, what are we going to use it for? Well, we're actually just going to go ahead and save it into a new directory called prefabs. Oh, uh, come on, mess. Prefabs. Just drag it down into that directory, and it's saved as a prefab, and we can delete it from the scene. So what we need to do with our ships is we need to create those shield arcs for our ship. Um, and that means that here in the ship script, we need to add another variable, or 8. So the first variable we're going to need to add is public uh, game object uh, shield arc fab. There you go. And we're also going to have to add public game object shield arcs, like so. Over here, we're back into scene view, and we're going to go ahead and drag the shield arc into the shield arc fab section, and then in start, we're going to go ahead and uh, establish those. Um, and then we're going to go uh, uh, shield arcs equals new game object 4, because we have 4 arcs, and then we're going to just create them. So shield arc, uh, so game object uh, arc equals instantiate uh, shield arc fab comma transform dot position comma quaternion dot identity alright so this is a little bit convoluted if you've never done instantiating before but basically uh, we also have to cast it as a game object there. basically we're telling it to spawn at our position and with no rotation easy enough then we say shield arcs dot uh, shell x0 equal arc, but we have to scale this, uh, so arc dot local scale, arc dot transform dot local scale uh, equals new, uh, equals vector3 dot one times size. Vector3 dot one is just a vector that's one one one, uh, which allows us to do scaling in all directions really easily. So then we just repeat this three times. Oop. There we go. However, uh, instead of using quaternion.identity, we use quaternion.rotate uh, axis, uh, angle axis, here it is, angle axis, and then I don't know whether this is using um, degrees or radians, I think it's using radians. So if that's the case, then that should work. like that. So shall we go ahead and see whether or not that works? Oh, there's actually one more thing I forgot we have to do. So you can see that it worked, but none of them have the correct rotation. They are all rotated not at all. So why is that? Well, they actually are rotated, but it turns out that I was wrong, and it uses angles rather than... Uh, it uses degrees rather than radians. So that's not difficult. In fact, it's a little bit easier in terms of what we write. There you go. Perfect. So now we have a ship that has a layer of shields around it, and we can specify how large the shields are going to be. Um, but we actually need to do a little bit of silliness here, uh, or rather a little bit of, of uh, both maintenance and clarification. One of the issues is that uh, we are centered, uh, so we can't actually see the cracks in between the shields, which can make it difficult to determine which arc is actually going to be under fire. Because of that, we actually are going to move each of these just a little bit in the direction that we want it to be. However, since this is actually the same code repeated over and over and over, we're going to create just a very simple function to do it for us. Oh, it's actually doing that one. Right 
There we go. Like that. Uh, which means that we're going to have to make size into a shared variable. I mean, a, a uh, sorry, a class variable. And this will be something that's per ship. So if you have a larger ship, you'd obviously have larger shields. It doesn't say anything about the strength of the shields. It's just a matter of having the shields outside of your mesh so that you don't have your shields inside. And uh, so here, we're just going to copy. Uh, we actually don't need the last bit. There we go. Game object arc equals shield arc fab transform to position plus offset uh, quaternion. Oh, I need this one here. Angle. Like that. And uh, return arc. And this should cut down on the amount of repetitive bullcrap we put here. And instead, we're going to say equals create shield. Vector three dot uh, four or transform dot forward uh, divided by four and zero, and then we're just going to do the same thing two more, a couple more times here. Uh, let's go ahead and keep it in. Um, we need, to, we need to know the order of these shields for the purposes of later things are going to hit them. So I'm going to keep it so that it's northeast, southwest. All right. So let's go ahead and take a look. All right. So now you can see that we have the shields and there are breaks between them. Perfect. But you can see that our dummy ship doesn't have any shields, and that's because we never assigned the shield fab to it. And in fact, it's complaining down here. It's going, Rrr. so let's go ahead and just drag that shield arc onto that dummy ship. And now you'll find that all of our ships can have the same kind of shielding. But the shielding in question isn't very clear as to exactly how strong it is, or what the state is, or any of that stuff. So we're going to have to go ahead and create some variables. Uh, let's go ahead and do a state public float shield arc power or uh, shield arc percent all right and we need to do a public float this goes down with the stats Shield regeneration equals 10. Say 10% per second, which is way too high, but it will let us see what the heck's going on. All right, so we're going to go ahead and right near create shield. Let's move create shield down into some place where it's uh, out of the automatic function calls and into its own little shielding area. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted. I don't know why it creates a summary on the second half of that, not the first half. You would think that it would be okay either way, huh? I really hate mono. If it if it behaved wrong in a reliable way, it would be okay. But instead, it behaves wrong randomly. I'm sure it's not actually random, but it might as well be. Uh, we'll go ahead and make this a delta. Now, you may be wondering why I'm going from 0 to 100 instead of from 0 to 1. 
There's no real reason. Um, it's just that when I actually do the shield percentage display, I either have to round a multiple of a hundred, or I can just round. So there's no there's no real reason why it should be one or the other, as far as I know. Uh, so I'll just make it a hundred, so it's a little bit easier later on. Tiny, tiny fraction of a centimeter easier. I don't have to multiply by 100 once. <sighs> Alright, so then what we're going to do is we're going to change the shield arc's value, the shield arc uh, fab, uh, here. Uh, we're going to change the mesh filter. I guess I have to... Oh, it's not the mesh filter, is it? What is it? It's mesh mesh renderer. I wonder if that's available. Nope. There we go. There we go. Uh, we're partially transparent, so keep it that way. So if we're going to go ahead and say if shield arc percent shield is greater than 80, then that's the color we want. Now we'll hit save about 8 million times and wait 5 seconds for Mono Develop to realize that I'm not, in fact, trying to type flugadoobity and crunch into a damn drum And we'll try it again. Later on, we may actually change the mesh so that the mesh of those objects changes, uh, well, there's no if. Um, and that way we can have an actual thinner mesh for the shields, which are thinner. Uh, we're not going to do that right now because uh, I would just use local scaling and that would actually result in the mesh covering less uh, of the quadrant, and that's the opposite of what we want. So let's go ahead and take a look at the parsing error that we've got. It's funny how it would red highlight anything and everything except when I forget. I need to stop complaining about mono develop. Why is it a float? Oh, we actually haven't programmed in the part where we increase the shield, so let's do that here. Let's take a look. Big fat error. Um, let me go ahead and look into this. Uh, the problem is, of course, that it's not the shield object that has the mesh renderer. Uh, the mesh renderer is actually a sub-object, as you might remember. Um, to go back into Unity and show you, uh, here you can see that our prefabs, the shield arc actually contains the mesh rather than being the mesh because the mesh is rotated and scaled arbitrarily when it's imported from Blender. So we needed to put it inside of another object that lets it do that. Now it works, see it's red and uh, there, now it's yellow. And that's blue. All right. So in the next map, uh, in the next episode, we'll probably put in some firepower and shoot some stuff. Um, also, please note that the shields uh, don't have any actual um, shielding values associated with them; just a percentage as to whether or not they're whole and healthy. They'll be separate. Uh, we're going to be using the shield values in the same way we use the throttle uh, or the speed. We're going to be multiplying by the shield percent.
Alright, so that's it for this episode. See you next time.